everybody, it's your girl Kenlo back at it again. I'm back with the first interview of the summer season of the Kenlo Show, and I'm sitting here with my guy Thanks for How you doing today, Dink? Blessed, highly favored. How are you, Kenlo? I'm great. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Yeah. You know, I've been seeing you dancing, working, smiling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when did it all start for you? How how has dancing changed your life in all ways? Oh, dancing has changed my life forever. For one, I've been dancing since I was 14, since I moved to Philly. Uh, originally from Virginia, before that, Arkansas, before that, Rhode Island. Um, but Philly is my home. I've been here since I was 14, 15. Uh, my cousin was like a three-time, four-time Apollo winner. Um, and that's what really got me into, like, dance. I wasn't really dancing before that. But um, I had family who was uh, into dance and into entertainment. And uh, I, that's how I really started, like, picking up performing and dancing. I've been doing it ever since. Okay, so aside from your family, who else motivated you to dance and really take it serious for yourself? Um, besides, like, my peers that I was around, like, as a kid, and then, like, uh, early on, like, I had joined, like, a dance company, and, like, straight out of high school, I was touring and performing. I was fortunate enough to, uh, like, tour with the State Department with that dance company, like, in 2014, and, um, that was, like, uh, that whole experience kind of, like, engulfed me into, like, really wanting to turn dance into what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of knew what I wanted to do, like, Straight out of high school, like when everybody was taking their SATs, I was touring in Canada okay. doing dance stuff. So uh, for me, dancing and performing always been like a part of what I've been doing like mm -hmm. since I moved here, obviously. Okay. So what has been some of your greatest accomplishments in your dancing career? Uh, I got to travel the world. I think that's like one of the biggest things. I think when you find like something you love to do, mm -hmm. it don't never feel like work. Right. So like most of the places I like traveled or been to like, I got to go to uh, Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. Like I said, we toured for the State Department the whole month of uh, April in 2014. Okay. So we got to go to like orphanages, and uh, uh, we did like dance competitions, mm -hmm. and we did like uh, schools and universities, like theater stuff. And uh, when, it, when I came back to the States, I really like wanted to start uh, my dance organization called Project Positive. Okay. Um, it's a Philadelphia-based dance organization that uses hip hop to inspire the youth mm -hmm. in our community. Um, so it just started off as just like dancing on the streets, mm -hmm. um, making money and like parties and doing stuff like that and trying to, t I started taking some of the funds from that, started putting it into hip hop dance workshops okay. and uh, a, lot, a lot of my peers and people that were helping me start it kind of like helped me build it to what it is today. And uh, there's other like organizations and companies that have built from that that started their own thing and parents off to do uh, things with dance and community and uh, even like commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, got people that work with like um, the Sixers, uh, I myself work, been working with the Sixers for like eight years. Okay. Um, so like those are like some of the things that like kind of like, as far as like a storyline of how I started to where I'm at now. Like mm -hmm. um, even in uh, having our own space right now and people being able to use the space and it's kind of like a build up to everything I've been doing. That's what's up. Yeah. So tell us about the Sixers. When did you get started with the Sixers and how has that journey in itself been for you? Uh. The Sixers, I actually came into, like I said, a, a pair of mine who was on the Sixers team mm -hmm. before he actually uh, was on the team for like five years. Okay. And uh, at the time, I was like still like building up my own thing, but uh, same time, I was, it was, it was, oh, okay. I'll get it. Just um, pick up where you left off with the Sixers. Uh, so, yeah, so like I was saying, uh, with the Sixers, I started with Sixers maybe in like 2015, 16 maybe. Okay. Uh, and that whole transition kind of like changed my whole like professional side of what I was doing, like mm -hmm. with dance. Like I couldn't really dance on the streets no more on the train. Like I still do, we still do performances at like festivals and okay. do street performances, mm -hmm. but like, uh, uh, we used to like perform on the trains, like mm -hmm. on the Broad Street line. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, like I had got locked up with a friend of mine um, who also has a dope company today from it. But uh, 
I got locked up with a friend of mine for dancing and performing on the train. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that actually is a story to go back on that would be like, uh, that actually kept me from being on the Sixers team back mm-hmm. when I was trying to audition. I had to audition mm-hmm. three times to be on the Sixers. Uh, first time didn't make it. Mm-hmm. Second time I made it, mm-hmm. but then I had an open case with SEPTA for okay. me getting locked up on the train. Okay. So I was on the team for like three weeks practicing mm-hmm. before the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was one of the only members that had my passport at the time, mm-hmm. like rookie members. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were supposed to go to Spain and all mm-hmm. that. And uh, I had got a call from HR and they were telling me like I couldn't go to Spain mm-hmm. and I couldn't be on the team. Right. So okay. that kind of like killed me because... I had just quit my job, mm-hmm. and I had was like, I'm with the Sixers, like, mm-hmm. I was hyped, so, but, um, long story short, uh, I wound up going, I wound up getting through that, beating my case with SEPTA, uh, went back the next year, mm-hmm. made the team, okay. and they were happy to have me back, and I've been there eight, nine years since, nine seasons since, so. Now, I also see that you do music. Now, when did you transition into music from dance while also dancing as well? Um, Music always kind of been a part of my life, always. Mm -hmm. I wasn't always a rapper or I wasn't always writing or I wasn't always. I think uh, just from being like I used to uh, choreograph and I was the hype man Mm -hmm. and um, stage presence for uh, a brother named Yaz the Greatest, Mm -hmm. Rashia Gray. And uh, the, the mm-hmm. youngest lion from Empire, mm-hmm. the TV show Empire, and uh, that th- that was one of my like immersions into the music and entertainment mm-hmm. kind of business because um, I kind of like I watched that young man growing the way he was doing today. So mm-hmm. like um, even before he started acting, mm-hmm. he was always doing music. So when he got a role to do music and act, it was kind of like. Right. It was kind of like a, a shoe in, but uh, no, I, I would say I've been always doing music. Like even over the last two years, um, me and my my business partner DJ Mike Cannon, mm-hmm. he kind of like actually spent time with me as an artist. Like mm-hmm. he seen that I was like, I was already kind of writing and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but he was more so on the like the beats and the production side of it. Okay. So uh, we kind of came together. Like even now, we like got a whole studio together. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a music studio and dance studio. Um, so, but like, but it, it just, it, it, he kind of really spent a lot of time with me, um, grooming me as an artist um, over the last like two, three, four years, honestly, okay. and us kind of like putting that time into each other. Okay. Um, and I think that's one of the, that's one of the best things, like, and the main things you need, like, on a come up is like, you need somebody in your corner. And you go through the thick and thin with people, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, you gotta like really, you gotta really have that understanding of what's more important. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes you, 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 you pit it with people to uh, do something uh, bigger than both of you or bigger than a whole group of people. And if you put that first and realize that focus first, I think it'll come out on top. I like that. That was deep. I like that show. Y'all heard him. Y'all heard deep. It's good. Get deep. Get deep, deep. It's, 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 it's trying and it's hard. It's not, uh, like, I didn't just want to be, like, a rapper, but, like, a lot of my, a lot of my friends and family was like, yo, dude, let, like, you're, you're good for that. You can do that. My, uh, my cousin used to call me Lambo Larry. And I used to be like, uh, I'm Lambo Larry because I, mm-hmm. I spit bars, not because I get cars. Because I spit bars fast. Like, I could just come off the top fast or something. So, like, I think that's what really got me into music and then wanting to just do my own thing. And seeing a lot of other artists, like, um, kind of really inspired me. Like, from, like, Miramatic to Dom Dukes. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are, like, local artists from, like, West Philly. And uh, they're, like, un- they're, like, hidden diamonds. Like, they, they're dope. Even, like, a brother named Black Five Seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are, like, people that, like, kind of, like, I've seen that was, like, really doing their thing and, like, um, it made me want to like understand the business side of it more. So like, in the last two years, I was kind of like just studying the business of music. And, you know, pitting myself as an artist. Like, what would, what would I, myself as an artist look like? And I'm just kind of feeling that out now, okay. to be honest. That's what's up. Yeah. So how far do you want to go with both dancing and your music? I mean, to be honest, I think it goes like one and the same. Okay. Like my whole plight with dance um, in the hip hop realm of things mm-hmm. and in the music side of things has always been to connect like the dancers with the music artists, especially in my city of Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed like there's a deficit there, like a big deficit. Like um, dancers ain't paying attention to what artists are doing. Mm-hmm. Artists ain't paying attention to what the dance community is doing. Mm-hmm. And um, I would say it's more so culture's fault. It's like it's our own fault. Like right. we can't really blame one or two or a group of people mm-hmm. when we have the power to change it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a, um, I kind of like was like tired. Me personally, I was like uh, tired of working, trying to work with artists, mm-hmm. and was like, you know what? I'm gonna become my own artist. And it was, a part of it was really, I really started doing music, to be honest, mm-hmm. because I wanted my own music to post on Instagram and TikTok, too. 
Like I, every time I, po- I every time I would post to another artist song, mm-hmm. like before Reels mm-hmm. became a thing, before TikTok became really heavy, I was posting on Instagram every day to a new artist song that was coming out. You know what I mean? Because I seen I seen other dancers doing that that probably connected with the artists, mm-hmm. but then that made me want to get connected with artists in my own city right. so we can build that up. And you know what I mean? But same time, you know, it's Philly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. But um, what is your, well, what have been your biggest accomplishments within the music industry? Um, on a, I haven't like broken the bank on like a, like viral moment or anything with that yet. But uh, like I said, dance goes simultaneously with music. If we talk about hip hop as a whole, and we talk about like to the core of it, like to mm-hmm. the four elements of what hip hop is, mm-hmm. like breaking, DJing, graffitiing, and emceeing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, D, like, it's DJs that's B-boys. It's B-boys that are graph writers. Mm-hmm. It's graph writers that are MCs. So, like, it's not that just because you're a DJ doesn't mean you can't break dance. Just because right. you break dance doesn't mean you can't MC. Mm-hmm. Just because you can MC doesn't mean you can't graffiti. Right. They're all simultaneous. So, I'm kind of like on the, I'm kind of that artist that's bringing, like, I'm trying to bring back the true essence of hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I just shot a, a video with Killer White House. Shout out to Killer White House. Um, TV, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just shot a video with Killer White House, and it's my first video ever to my song "Go," which okay. is on all streaming platforms. Shameless plug. Oh, but speaking of which, how was that for you? How it does was, that feel for you? Yo, to be honest, it was a nervous feeling for me, and I don't like you would think from all the performing I do, I don't really get nervous like that. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, I'm a human being. Like right. we get nervous, so uh, nah, it just was like it was a it was a refreshing, and it was a uh, how should I say like it was it was a gratifying feeling for me because that's the first time I kind of like step out to do something without a team mm-hmm. of people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I kind of get, sometimes I get like worried about myself and a little self-confident sometimes when I don't got my team with me, but sometimes you got to really just push and go forward with what you got. I like uh, that. Yeah, that's all I can say. That's what's up. Yeah. And the last question that I always ask everybody, what is the greatest advice that you can give to somebody that wants to do something that they love and really take it serious? And yeah, like what do you have to say to anybody younger or older? Mm. Uh, if I can give like a good piece of advice to anybody that's trying to do something serious and like take it seriously, is be serious. Mm-hmm. Like, stand for something or fall for anything. That's my slogan. That's my, that's what I go by. Like, and if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for what everybody else got going on. Don't le- don't don't be afraid to really be yourself. And it's sometimes when people be like, "Yo, be yourself." That's sometimes I, I, I can see how people like fold under that pressure because it's hard to be yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Like, and it, it, it's even harder to try to be somebody else though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I applaud anybody who's out there trying to be themselves because that's the true essence in finding yourself. Like, find yourself and stick to it. Stay 10 toes. I can give you a whole bunch of like, honestly, mm-hmm. phrases and things I can say that like really empower somebody. But mm-hmm. honestly, it's just like, stay steadfast in what you want to do. And when I say steadfast, mm-hmm. it's like, Stay sturdy, right. you know, and don't don't let n- nobody, no person, no don't let no thing, don't let no road bump or no physical ailment mm-hmm. stop you. Because I've seen people that have less. I'm a dancer. I've seen mm-hmm. people that have less limbs than me mm-hmm. do things I can't do. That's so I, and the, the impossible is possible to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. That's what's up, thing. That was that was beautiful. Yeah. As we say, that was beautiful. Okay, period. It's your girl, Kenlo, back at it again. It's your boy, Dink. Dinksworth. Where can they follow you at, Dink? Listen, follow me on Instagram at Dinksworth. Also, follow my nonprofit organization. It's called Project Positive, inspiring the youth through hip hop dance. Um, this is also, uh, we're now sitting in right now, Project Positive Philly Surfer Studios. Um, shout out Philly Surfers, man. They uh, actually been working with them forever. Um, they actually are core pioneers of what we did with Project Positive, and they broke off to make, they, um, make a whole nother business and thrive and Keep it going and keep keep shit to the light. Again, it's your girl Kenlo back at it again. You can follow me at your girl Kenlo underscore powered by Kenlo ITV. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And before we go, stay tuned again for the new interview with your girl Kenlo and Dane. Stay tuned. All right, so that's it. I'll see y'all later.